Former Walmart employees of Reddit, what are your horror stories? Not so much a horror story, I worked in grocery as a stocker, we had just finished a cereal display near the front of the store compiled of about 100 boxes, in comes an older lady, around 60s, driving one of the electric carts, she's looking dead on at the display and promptly rams into the thing, boxes go everywhere and she starts apologizing over and over and explains that she's legally blind, a customer that was nearby and saw everything asked her how she drove here if she was blind. She responded by quickly turning around and leaving the store. I'm cured, it's a miracle. My mom was a manager at Walmart. She told me about this woman who was trying to steal a prepaid phone. When she got caught by security she used the knife she was attempting to open the plastic packaging with to cut the security dude after cutting herself. She then went on to scream at him that she has AIDS and now he's going to have it for trying to stop her. We just recently had that happen with a security guard at my work. Our security guard threw this punk out of his car as he attempted to make off with some merchandise. And she scratched him with her nails by mistake. Whoops colon genuinely wasn't her intention. And he proceeded to absolutely howl and laugh about how she now had AIDS. Freaking savages. I used to do field service for Walmart's in the Portland, Oregon area. The East Portland stores were especially fun. S. The Wood Village, East Port Plaza, and Happy Valley stores are relatively close together and we techs referred to them as the Gauntlet. The East Port Plaza store was especially active, and we nicknamed that one Thunderdome. Every visit, we would witness an arrest or something more exciting or disgusting. Last Christmas, for instance, while Frank Sinatra's version of Miss Leto and Holly was playing, a dude was totally fassaplanted by some cops after resisting arrest in the process damaging the automatic doors and knocking over a display. Another time, a tech witnessed the arrest of the hottest looking H ever on 82D street being cuffed and stuffed in the parking lot. One day, I arrived at Thunderdome, and noticed that I could not get to the customer service desk to check in, several workers were not allowing people to pass, and there were also a number of orange cones marking the restricted area. A quick whiff indicated what my eyes later confirmed. Crap all over the floor. The men's room is right next to the customer service area. Eventually they had to break out the, the Zamboni machine to finish cleaning up. I had about 10 registers to work on there that day. They beat the heck out of their equipment in that store. And after 2 hours I was ready to take a leak and check out. They still weren't letting anybody into the men's room. God only knows what horrors there must have been. Being cuffed and stuffed in the parking lot. Hey, some people get off by doing it in public. Working there as a cashier since October. Christmas Eve rolls around. And thank god I'm not scheduled to work. Q phone call from the manager asking why I haven't come in yet that day. I'm not on the schedule manager. Yes you are me. I'm not coming in. I wasn't on the schedule. Next day I worked with the day after boxing day. Went and looked at the schedule, and lo and behold, someone wrote that I was supposed to work, in pencil. I quit shortly after. I worked at Walmart about 13 years ago at one of the few stores left that closed overnight. It was a regular old Walmart, not at all super. I worked overnight, stocking. I liked it. I only dealt with customers for a couple hours before the store closed and then just stocked the shelves. I mainly worked in the automotive department, and the nights would go by really fast. I worked with a bunch of people who were related to each other. There was the dad, Steve, his wife, his wife's sister, and his stepdaughter who worked there during the day in the jewelry department. Steve stocked the sporting goods department, right next to mine. This guy was really gross. He would constantly pop over to my section and ask me if I needed help lifting stuff up onto the overstock shelves and he would make comments about how pretty I was and how if he was 10 years younger he'd date me. Dude was pushing 50 and I was just a 19 year old girl. I just laughed off his comments, say I didn't need help and that I was perfectly happy with my boyfriend thank you. One night he decided to tell me how big his penis was. He related a story, a total lie, I'm sure. 
to me about how one day he was getting out of the shower and his stepdaughter, who was 17, saw him accidentally and exclaimed about how nice his penis was and how she wanted to try it out. I was dumbfounded and I did not know what to say. I just said oh, well I gotta get back to work and kinda shuffled away. A week later he was caught having sex with his wife's sister in the bathroom at work. They were both fired. His wife quit and his stepdaughter continued to work there. Holy crap. You worked at the Jerry Springer version of the store. Mine isn't as bad as some of those here, but it was its own special kind of awful. I worked on third shift for a summer between college years. The Walmart I was in had about one hour's worth of music playing over the speakers all night, playing on a non-stop loop. My sleep habits were already pretty fricked from trying to adjust to third shift, but the music is what really did it. I heard that same music loop over and over again, all shift, five days a week. When I left the store, I would still hear it running in my head. Then I started hearing it in my dreams. Then, it got so ingrained, that I started just dreaming I was working my shift at Walmart. Several days a week, I would have the experience of working an entire 8 hour shift. Then just around quitting time, my alarm clock would go off, and I would wake up and go work an 8 hour shift. I quit a few weeks early at the end of the summer because I was losing my goddamn mind. I sprained my back moving product in the back. At first I thought it was a pulled muscle, and walked towards the pharmacy to try and buy our heating pads and some Tylenol. I made it to jewelry, barely keeping conscious from the pain. I asked my co-worker to call management and let them know I had hurt myself pretty badly and needed to go to the hospital. Management told her to have me go to the back office to fill out paperwork. I blacked out twice going back, and was yelled at for taking so long. I ended up being out for a month and a half for the injury, and got a whopping $24 in workman's comp because the second I got hurt my hours were reduced to 1 hour a week. I hate Walmart. A lot of what I'm seeing in the comments of people who didn't know they had a lawsuit on their hands, makes me feels like I should start a non-profit primarily focused on informing Walmart employees of their rights. A friend of mine was working part time at Walmart. He'd been there for over a year, was working any and all positioned shifts they threw at him so he could try to provide for his wife and, unexpected, new baby. He started to apply for any and all full-time positions as they really needed the benefits. One day management took him aside and told him this was not the Walmart way and he needed to make a plan with steps on how to get to a particular position. Apparently, anything full-time is not okay. Walmart wants to help you achieve your, specific, goals. Once I had a woman who was giving me a hard time about a coupon that was expired, coupon people are the worst. She refused to give up, she really wanted that dollar off. My line was really getting long and I was getting really frustrated. So I reached in my pocket and pulled out a 5 and said if I give you a 5 will you give up on this coupon she got p and said I can't believe you said that to me. She told the CSM but I didn't get in trouble for it. You're right, coupon people are the worst. I'll start with my grossest, a woman comes in with some panties and said they didn't fit and she wanted to return them for cash because she had already bought the correct size elsewhere. She had a receipt and plopped her Walmart bag down on the counter. Inside this bag were 6 crusty crotched, crap stained panties that were a biohazard from 6 feet away. Needless to say I did not touch them. I page the manager on duty and he tells me to just take them back despite being very nasty processed the return and she happily left the store with her $8. Those panties were worth a lot more with the crusty crotch and crap stains there they would ever be. New. Your manager is a smart businessman. Probably banked $50 to $60 a pair. Easily. You'd be surprised what man will spend on a good pair of stinky undies. Former cart pusher. Had an old lady try to tip me $1 after I helped her bring her newly bought plants or some crap to her car. Told her I couldn't accept it per company policy, and it was only $1 so I mean it wasn't particularly enticing. She then proceeded to roll over in her little scooter mobile and stuff it down the front of my pants. She chuckled dirtily as she rolled away. TLDR. Took cold hard cash down my pants like a stripper. That TLDR. Is possibly the funniest thing I've ever read and I don't know why. I worked for Malwart 11 years ago for a whopping total of 8 months. 
I work the overnight shift as an overnight stocker for department 8, pets. The store I worked at had just gotten brand new high rise shelves installed. They were said to be able to hold over a ton. Well, one night after getting all my regular freight stocked and the overstock put into the bins, my bosses had me pull 8 pallets of arm and hammer cat litter. The boxes had a bonus 10 pounds inside, making them nearly 35 or so pounds a piece. They wanted all of those on the high rises. I asked if they were absolutely sure the shelves would be able to handle all that weight. I threw a crap fit about it because I know I was in the right for being worried. Other department managers who were there also sided with me. They watched over the next couple of hours as I carefully did my job. As I was putting the final 12 boxes on the bottom shelf, I heard a cracking and tearing sound. And next thing I know is I'm buried underneath all of the cat litter that had caused the shelf to collapse. Everybody in the store heard it happen. And everybody was explicitly told not to dial 9, 1, 1, or anything. Frick that crap. After getting all my blood cleaned from my face and cuts patched up, I called my uncle's then time girlfriend who is a lawyer, told her what had just occurred, and what the upper management is attempting to do. As of today, I still haven't spent all the money I received as a result of going to court over it. Frick Walmart. I'm beginning to wonder if there is some sort of unofficial since they wouldn't put that crap in writing. Policy about calling 911. I was denied it too when I was assaulted by a customer. Freaking Walmart. This was like 5 days ago. I still work there. Went into the men's room and there was liquid crap on the wall and dripping down to the floor. Like someone literally shot a diarrhea rocket on the wall. I just pretended like I didn't see it and carried on with my day colon. That's really the best thing you could have done. I don't even understand how people think it's okay to do this. Open up the semi-trailer full of pet food to be greeted by 5 raccoons staring me down. I'm a full grown man but that was intimidating. Raccoons can can be scary as frick. I would have probably let out a very undignified squeal. Last summer I frequently visited my best friend who worked at the technology counter thing at Walmart. One day when I was there someone took the biggest, steamiest crap I've ever seen in my life in the middle of the toy aisle. Someone pushed a car through it and it smeared everywhere. My buddy called in a code brown on his walkie talkie, trying to be a smart butt. Code brown means hostage situation. Hilarity ensued. When I worked at a hospital, a code brown was what your buddy thought it was. I was working at Walmart at the beginning of this year, aside from weird older men hitting on me, it wasn't that bad. A few weeks before the minimum pay was raised, they decided I needed a new position in the store. I was told that I was great with people and needed to be out helping customers as opposed to checking. Sales associates get paid less than cashiers. They told me that since it was basically a promotion for me that they would let me keep the cashier pay instead of lowering me to sales pay. I agreed to the job for that reason. Plus new job was full time. A week later they take me to sign the papers for the job switch and the manager gets to the pay part. He says, I know we told you that you could keep the same pay, but it's just easier to make it the same as everyone else's. Besides, everyone's pay is going up in a few weeks anyway. So I just agreed, whatever still going to be making more. Then my hours start getting cut. I agreed to 40 hours. I was cut down to 25. My manager said he messed up the schedule on accident and would fix it. It continued happening every week. I finally got so frustrated I just left one day and never came back. That type of management doesn't deserve a two week notice. There was black mold in the dairy cooler. And I don't mean just a little patch. I mean all the way along the yogurt wall. The manager who was asked to clean it claimed he did. So naturally the higher up management went to check his work. He hadn't even touched it. They ended up having to stand in there watching him disinfect the cooler from top to bottom. This was a well known druggie and it was too gross for him. A co-worker witnessed one of the day shift meat department workers take a piece of meat that was almost green out of claims and put it back on the shelf. On top of that. For a good 3 months you could smell the expired meat from outside the meat cooler. Oh god, meat claims, the smell from some of the things that come from returns. Why are people returning meat anyway, after sitting there all day, liver was the worst. Walmart week long anniversary sale. I bring out a crate of charm in ultra soft that was on sale. A pack of shoppers jump at it. 
Mum sends her little 5 year old daughter to squeeze into the crowd. Other lady scratches her and takes her score. Women's washroom. Blood, poop, water and tissue everywhere. A line of pee off ladies forms in under 1 minute after closing off washroom for cleaning. Some guy throws up in aisle 3. Barricade both ends of the aisle to clean up. People still try to squeeze in even with the smell and the visibly disgusting floor. Collecting carts in a parking lot where driving instructors like to take their students. This was before they had that electronic cart pushing thing. People will stand in the middle of the road as they see me coming in with the carts all the while dragging little Timmy with him her. I can't just swerve away from you and that oncoming car so get out of the way. Some guy makes the perfect spiral poop in the urinal in the men's washroom. Why? How? I left it for the night crew and feigned ignorance. I envy spiral poopers. They have it good. 4 hours into my first shift, I was facing items on a bottom shelf while a co-worker was facing items on the top shelf. She dropped a gallon of Gatorade on my head. Management refused to let me report the injury or leave to seek medical attention. I finished the shift, dazed and in pain. The next day I found out my skull was broken. Officially, since I was not allowed to report the injury, it didn't happen at work. I rage quit. You should have rage sued. Happened before I got hired, but I heard enough about it from co-workers. An elderly couple would come in once a week to go shopping. The old man had troubles walking so he would kiss his wife and go sit in the fitting room area until she was done. One day they came in and did their little kiss and he also handed her his wedding ring. Like he knew something was about to happen. A couple minutes of sitting there after his wife walked off. The guy collapsed to the floor and the fitting room ladies called 911. One of the department managers of the time was also a paramedic so he rushed over. The old guy started to cough up blood and every available associate had to come and make a wall of people so customers don't see what is going on. All of these associates saw and heard the guy choking on his own blood, now coming out of his nose and ears dying on the floor. They were trying to find his wife and no one could find her and the associates had to wait a half hour for the coroner to get down there and take the body. The associates who saw it still have flashbacks about it. I don't know if I had one particular horror story. Every day was its own horror story. My biggest pet peeve was people coming through the express lane with 800,000 items in their freaking cart. Overweight, middle-aged women were the primary culprits. I don't know why. Some weird sense of entitlement, I guess. There was one lady who could tell I was annoyed. I didn't say anything, but she kept trying to have a conversation with me and I kept giving her short, one word answers. At one point she was like do you have a problem with Emmy or something and I was like well, it does say 20 items or less. We have very little counter space here. She said you're the most hateful person I've ever met, which must be an exaggeration, because I never said anything really rude to her, other than to answer the question she clearly asked. I'm surprised she didn't call a manager. Some dude pounded his fist on the counter as hard as he could and screamed come on man hurry the frick up. I was trying to unroll a roll of dimes to give him his change. He was buying corn dogs from the deli place. Had a guy throw his cigarettes at me because they were the wrong ones. I laid the box on the counter. He picked them up and threw them at me, hitting me in the chest and said I said gold. Moron. Those were just isolated buttholes, though. Really it was just the monotony and soul sucking feeling of dealing with slack jawed idiots all freaking day long. Comma had a guy throw his cigarettes at me because they were the wrong ones. I laid the box on the counter. He picked them up and threw them at me, hitting me in the chest and said I said gold. Moron. Working the cigarette register sucks. I feel your pain. Either you have a snoring butthole. I almost got stabbed doing it once. Not really a horror story, more sad than anything. There was this older lady, late 50s, early 60s. I'm guessing, that came in every day and she would kind of attach herself to an employee, usually the same one, and follow them around just talking to them about their day, her day, all kinds of stuff. As soon as I started at Walmart, she attached herself to me. I actually got to know her pretty well. She didn't drive and walked about 20 miles to get to Walmart each day, just because she had nothing else to do and was lonely. Her words. She had seven, I think cats and three pugs. She lived in a house with no floors and no electricity. A co-worker who lived near her verified this. 
I'm pretty sure she didn't have running water, either, just because of obvious hygiene issues. She also very obviously had some kind of mental issues. What was even more sad is that a lot of my co-workers would make fun of her to her face, but she didn't understand what they were doing. I thought it was really fricked up. I felt bad for her. So whenever I had time I would stop and talk to her. It got to the point where she would call the store looking for me on the days she didn't come in. That is really sad actually. Poor lady. One day a woman stole a bottle of perfume and took it to the bathroom. She poured it out into her own container and then proceeded to fill the container with her own pee. She then took the bottle up to returns and tried to return it. To this day I have no idea why my manager gave her the refund. It was very obvious that the woman pee in the bottle because it was still warm. TL. DR. Woman steals perfume, returns her own pee, and profits from Walmart. That seems to be a trend in Walmart management. They will accept just about anything as a return. Someone left a baby in a stroller just chilling in one of the aisles one night. I was a cashier at the time so I don't know all of the details. From what I know, authorities got involved and the guy came back after what we think was at least an hour or two, appearing oblivious to what he did wrong. Don't think he spoke much English so it was just a confusing situation all around. Thank god for the guy stocking who was looking out. We're lucky it didn't get any worse knowing how crazy people who come through can be, let alone at night. What's weird was this wasn't even brought up again with my co-workers so I don't recall what ended up happening to the guy. It was just another stupid thing we witnessed. Just read all these wasn't scheduled to work comments. Little lifesaver here. Always take pictures of the schedule, by phone or camera. Next time someone tries to tell you to work, send them the pic. Also, learn co-workers and bosses phone numbers and ignore calls from those numbers during unreasonable hours of the day. I did this, take a picture of my schedule, because my boss would change the schedule on me all the time and never call text email the change. They would get mad, but I even told them they need to let people know when they change the schedule or they are going to keep having people not show up. So, second story time about the time that I killed someone maybe. I was still working the customer service counter and we had this guy roll in with a very large stereo system box on top of a shopping cart. This guy pushing the cart is very thin, sweating, and quite obviously on something. I know this is going to go badly. There's a policy at Walmart, or the one that I worked at anyway, that electronics must be cleared by someone from that department before we accept any returns. I page electronics to the front of the store and as we're waiting, the guy with the return begins to sway and loses the little bit of color he had. With this, I have a gut feeling that this is about to go really badly so I page security too. Security and electronics arrive about the same time and as they begin to open the box, this guy goes down and begins convulsing on the floor. Security calls 911 and I use another phone to page the manager. Well, the manager arrives and decides that it simply will not do to have a customer convulsing on the floor for everyone to see so he tells the security guy to help him move the guy to the back office. They couldn't move him until he stopped seizing. And once he did, they sat his unconscious body in an office chair and wheeled him back. EMTs arrived a few minutes later and they were not amused that he was moved. They scooped and ran with the guy. When we opened the boxes finally, they were full of rocks. There was nothing in the boxes to return. I guess at least they called 911. Not a Walmart employee but we had a homeless guy die standing up taking a pee in a urinal. He somehow got wedged in between the barriers that separate urinals. Later that night the janitor found him with his crusty homeless dong in his hands. Dead. Go on. We had someone pee on one of our stock carts in the middle of the aisle. Someone put it in the back and wrote don't use. Peed on by customer. I had the picture of it on my phone for years. I remember the day I quit Walmart was when I realized the position I was in was not worth the money they would pay me. I was a connection center manager photo lab also ran toys since there was no manager. I was okay this is my first job out of high school not so bad I'm already a manager. The crap hit the fan after a year they fired the electronics manager and still no toys manager so I had to pick up the extra work. All I look forward to is that quarterly bonus we would receive if sales were high so I worked my butt off to make sure we would get that. 
keep in mind this is for the whole store, all department. Sales were amazing we were in the positives. The quarter ends and we get the bad news that the store didn't meet its sales criteria and no one was getting the bonus. Well crap the rest of the store miss off sucked so not so bad. Can't be my fault I worked so hard maybe people just aren't buying like they used to. Well the last straw was when I got called into the office to congratulate me on amazing sales and the connections center debt which is where we sold cell phone contracts. Went down like this. Store manager. Hey Grime004 great work in connections center you made the store a total of $26,000 in commission for the month and kept down fraud sales. Me. No way that's great does that mean that I get some type of bonus? Store manager. Um no the store didn't hit sales criteria. Me. I know but I over exceeded sales that should count for something. Store manager. Look wham it's a team and if the team fails you fail. So if Walmart gave you a bonus how would that look? I looked at home dumbfounded I didn't care that I didn't get money I was just so pee that they look at everything as a whole. I went in and resigned the next day didn't give them 2 weeks notice just said I'm done. 3 days later I get hired by a cellular company where I make 4x as much annually than I would at Walmart. The kicker was that 2 weeks later at my new job the co-manager calls me saying if I'm going to be back from vacation soon. I was like I quit 2 weeks ago actually and she lost it she was all you need to come in to get your last check. I go in he next day to get my check and the store manager is talking to the co-manager about moving such and such pallet and sees me and says get crime 4 to help. I say I'm here for my last check I quit 2 weeks ago. Store manager. You were serious? I thought to myself I didn't show up to work for 2 weeks I think you should have fired me. All I did was smile and say. I'm dead serious. TL. DR. Exceeded sales quota at Walmart phone center. Quit and was thought to be on vacation. As a cashier we were required to know before we started the transaction if the customer was using WIC. So I am going about my business and I go to start ringing the next customer up and I see cheese, peanut butter, milk, eggs, and cereal. All of these are very common WIC items. So I very nicely ask her if this is going to be a WIC transaction. That was my mistake because she blew up on me. Calling me a stupid racist because I just assumed she had to have WIC. She told me that was why I was working at Walmart because I was too dumb to actually go to college. I was in college at the time, with a school book under my register. It was really embarrassing and I really didn't mean anything by it. I just didn't want to have to call a CSM over to void the transaction if I did it incorrectly. I always felt really awkward about asking if it was WIC for exactly this reason. A lot of the customers in my area with WIC just happened to be minorities. So instead of saying anything, I would just start scanning. They would usually wait to tell me it was WIC until after I was finished. Keep in mind these were customers I had seen using WIC before, so they knew the drill. Ugh. The Walmart my brother works at. They had to close the bathrooms located at the back of the store permanently because folks kept getting high, painting the walls with their crap, ditching security devices and stealing merchandise, throwing used tampons about, leaving dirty needless, ODIing and finally dying in them. Now the unfortunate souls are forced to do some of these things in the parking lot. I wasted 3 years of my life at Walmart, primarily in the clothing and jewelry sections. In the latter, people would use our layaway program like a bank. They'd come in, pick out a ring, put $50 down on it, come back a few days later and cancel the layaway to get their money back. It was amazing how many people would straight up tell me I didn't trust myself not to spend it and my phone bill is due tomorrow. This happened ridiculously often. A general horror story is one Black Friday we had people taking ladders out of the hardware department and use them to climb up to the top shelves where our general layaway was stored. We had run out room in the back room. They started ripping open the packages and looting the stuff people had put money down on and just walked off into the store with it. The working conditions corporate greed in general were pretty bad, but nothing you haven't heard a million times before. Lastly, a second hand story, apparently a woman had a miscarriage in the restroom shortly before I started, and the managers had the mentally challenged cart boy got clean it up so they didn't have to hire an outside team to do it. I can't confirm whether or not that's true, but several people insist it was while I was there. I worked overnight stock, 
A guy came in one night, loaded drunk. I was bent down, filling a shelf full of green beans and I turned to see him standing there with his dong out. He asked me if I would suck it for 50 bucks. I got up quickly and called a manager. When she found him, he was in the underwear section rubbing himself on a pair of undies. He was arrested. I've posted a couple stories in Artalis from Retail, but here's a brief overview. Convinced a crap bird dog abuser to shock himself with a supposedly defective shock collar, complete with dog fur and skin where it rubbed the pooch's neck raw, was told I'd probably give a good blow job by a gay couple while I was sitting on the floor sorting over stock video games in the cases. Got to witness and almost be involved in a 7.30am shoe brawl. Received a creepy surprise back rub from a customer after showing him where phone chargers were. He walked up behind me, started rubbing, and whispered in my ear, You made my day, and so much other crap. Fun 4 years. I did not work for Walmart but for a company that serviced the magazines at Walmart among others. I would see people open magazines and spit in them and put them back. I would see people ripping out pages and blow their nose with it. People would stick religious and political pamphlets into the mags. I saw one old lady rip the covers off all the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues. Another time someone kept trying to hide the ESPN body issues which was frustrating because we were under orders to have them displayed prominently in a specific spot so I had to find them and reset them about 5 times. Then of course the people who just rip open the magazines in plastic wrap meant to keep something else inside like a CD or DVD and take the product. The best part is even though I had witnessed all of this our company policy was to not interact or try to stop the customer and to just throw away any damaged product and fix everything and go about our business and to just let the staff at Walmart. No, which I did but I'm sure you can guess what they would do about it, even with the culprit still in the store. That is seriously nasty. Those people are the same ones that go and crap in the dressing rooms. Workers of Subway, what is the most disgusting sandwich combination you've been asked to make? Finally, a question I can honestly answer. I've worked at Subway for over two years. An older couple walks in. The husband has health issue and the wife won't let him get cookies. They fight about it the entire time they're in line. The wife steps away to use the restroom. The husband leans in and frantically whispers I want those mother freaking cookies. Smash them in my sandwich before she comes back. So I did. I watched him eat the entire thing with the biggest smile on his face. It was awesome. And gross. I have a friend who gets what he calls a soup witch. Food cling honey wheat. Turkey. Chicken. American cheese. Lettuce. Banana peppers. Black olives. Red onion a few jalapenos, and every single sauce. He doesn't just tell the person making the sandwich he wants every sauce though. He pauses after every sauce, contemplates, and then says the next one. He even does both versions of a sauce if it has a light version. By the time the sandwich is done it is just leaking fluid. They usually try and put it in one of the salad containers for him otherwise it would just be a huge mess. If you rattle off all the things you want at once, the sandwich artist is very stingy. If you act indecisive, they don't know when you will quit, so they won't short you on the toppings. Former Subway employee here, there was a mother who came in daily to get a 12 inch for her son. Tuna with feta cheese, toasted, and then loads of ketchup and sweet onion sauce on top. Revolting, she said it was one of the only things she could get her teen son to eat. I worked at Subway 1994 to 1996. A truck driver, probably 6 feet 6 inches, orders a $86 sub. How is that even possible? He starts off, son are you ready to make the biggest baddest sub of your life? I make big subs all the time. Laughing deeply, oh boy you'll never see this again. Try me. Give me a foot long BMT. Big air. Meatier. Tastier. If you ever wondered, I want 8 double meats. 8 double cheese, 9 layers of bacon, more bread and every vegetable, 2 forks. So you want more bread added in between levels of meat? Yes. If it looks like it needs bread, add more. It took 3 papers to wrap that sub. It didn't fit in the bag. It was glorious. I kept the receipt and glued it in my yearbook with other memories from that year. He is America. Oh joy. I use for those 3 plus years. 
keep in mind I'm used to just about any random sandwich combination having worked in 3 different stores with interesting regulars. There's the guy who basically got a full cambro of black olives on his sandwich every goddamn time he came in, he wasn't supposed to be allowed. But I just marveled at how many he got and did it because, well not many people get them anyways. And the guy who sometimes got salads where the lettuce was replaced with jalapenos. But, one time I'm working and a guy comes in and I ask him what he wants. He gets a foot long worth of bread but says he wants nothing on it. So I ask veggie and head over to the veggie area. And we just stare at each other and I realize he meant nothing. So just as I'm about to tell him that I'd have to charge him for a veggie if he just wants the bread. I assumed for something else, as people tend to ask from time to time. He asks for salt and pepper. I pause for a moment and put it on. Maybe he doesn't have any at home and wants some on. But then he asks for more. And more. And more. There's now a very strong layer of salt and pepper, as visible as if it were meat laid end to end and keep in mind there are holes in the bread so there's even more hiding. And then he pays for it, sits down and eats it. The whole thing. I can't even. That's just the one thing that has stuck with me. There were men in odd cases working at Subway for this long. TL. DR. I have served many odd sandwiches, but none as odd as the only salt and pepper. Jesus. That sounds worse than eating a full stick of butter. Some guy wanted a foot long of lettuce and so much mayonnaise it looked like the end of a B film. It took up half the bottle. Upvote for the simile. When I was about 8 years old, I ordered a sub and asked for pickles. So some 60 year old man behind me said you like pickles boy so I didn't really know what to respond with so I said yeah and with no hesitation he said well, I'll show you a pickle to remember. Give me pickles. More pickles. More. And the last one was basically shouted. The lady actually had to go to the back and put full pickles in the sub. Dude got like 2 inches of pickles in the end. After we sat down to eat. He went to the booth behind us and started eating. Every bite sounded like someone was biting an apple. He ate the entire foot long, no drink, no chips. I thought this was going in a very different direction. I've seen it all. I don't work at Subway anymore, but I remember a few things. There was one guy who would order a vegetarian sub and get a little bit of vegetables on it and a crap ton of onions. He always asked for more. Like I mean I couldn't see anything else on the sub because there were that many onions. And of course the obvious sauce people who order 4 or 5 different sauces and the sub is just dripping and soggy. I've contemplated going to Subway and getting a vegetarian with only onions with sweet onion sauce. Like I actually just really like onions. A lot. A few weeks ago I was craving a grilled cheese and canned tomato soup combo, but was at work. Closest I was able to get was a toasted sub with different kinds of cheese, with marinara sauce inside. To his credit, the guy making my sub was super helpful and didn't make me feel like this was a gross sub combo, so who knows, he's probably made weirder. Every subway worker spends his or her employee meal making the weirdest crap they think might possibly taste good, it's like the world's shittiest test kitchen. I work at Port of Subs, very similar to Subway, a little more expensive but much better quality in my opinion, and I have a woman who frequently comes in and gets a foot long American cheese, 3 layers, sandwich on white bread with I kid you not, an uncomfortable amount of mayonnaise, yes, she said that to me, oil, vinegar, salt, pepper and that's it. She's just keeping it real. Scrawny guy ordered a triple meat feast. 12 pieces of every cold cut meat. He started bragging to the girls I worked with about how he eats them all the time. I can't even imagine the crap he took after. The foot long came in and went right out. There was a regular that would order a seafood sub. Extra extra seafood. With American cheese. Extra bacon. And southwest sauce. That's it. It was disgusting and smelled so bad. I was at Subway with a friend. And the guy in front of us had a normal meat, cheese and some veggies sub, but asked them for some mayo. They put on the first layer, then looked up at him. He simply nodded and said more. Each time they would do this and he would keep asking for more mayo. By the end there was more mayo on the sandwich than bread. He must have seen me staring. So he looks at me and says, boy, do I love me some mayo and walks off laughing to himself, holding the mayonnaise filled sandwich in his hand. 
not Subway, but then I worked at Tim Hortons. It's a coffee shop really big in Canada for those unaware, someone ordered a tuna sandwich on a blueberry bagel with tomato and honey mustard. This one guy always came in and got a beet ball sub with everything on it, every vegetable and a line of ever sauce. It was so nasty looking and drippy I don't know how the frick he ate it. Much better to toss some cheese, oregano, and parmesan on there and wrap that thing up. I had a little kid about 8 ask me to put half his bag of fritters on his sandwich. Not too disgusting, probably delicious actually, but that's pretty much the only weird request I ever got when working at a subway. He was the one who came up with the idea for the new fritters enchilada flatbread. Subway was my first job when I was 16. I loved it. The best part of it were the sandwiches you could make yourself after you got off shift. A double meat steak and cheese with bacon and slices of chicken breast topped with mayo and southwest sauce was my personal favorite. I was the anti Jared. I loved being able to put copious amounts of vegetables, black olives in particular, on my sandwich. When you go there now I feel like the people skimp on it. The hidden gem of Subway is the frozen cookie dough. So good. Enough of memory lane. My worst sandwich I ever made was probably for my sister. She didn't get a sandwich. She would just ask for a piece of bread and eat that. I told her it was such a waste, but that's the only thing she wanted. And I still had to ring her up like she was ordering a veggie delight. It always pee me off when she came in for nothing but the bread. Maybe it's not disgusting, just more of a waste, but her waste disgusted me. I've been told my orders are really strange disgusting so maybe this will interest someone. I always get tuna and salami, mixed cheese, black olives, and mustard. The bread changes depending on my mood. Minus the tuna and add some guac and that'd be amazing. I've seen some nasty bus subs within the couple months I work at Subway. The top two had to be the guy who came in about 30 minutes before we would close up and ordered a double meat tuna sub on flatbread. The most annoying sub to fold. With all of the vegetables. And every single condiment we had. Then there was an older lady who would always come in around 9pm and would order a spicy Italian sub with only half the meat and would put nothing but extra lettuce and onions. She literally cleaned out our onions and about half our lettuce tub making this. She was odd. Don't work at Subway but I've got a cousin who regularly orders a foot long on the herbs and cheese bread that is just a metric fuckton of chipotle sauce, banana peppers and pickle juice. Again, pickle juice. That makes the fourth unique mention of pickle juice today. For all the Subway workers reading this I just want you all to know how much I appreciate your work and dedication. I eat there all the time and they know my order by now. I think that Subway is better than the local delicatessens around here so please keep making odd combinations for sandwiches. And I promise to never be rude or swear at you, because reality is, you are gods. My usual sandwich is a foot long meatball with pepper jack toasted. I add spinach, onions, pickles, banana peppers, parmesan, and 50 stroke 50 sweet onion sauce and chipotle mayo. On several occasions, I've been asked if I was pregnant. I am a 27 year old black man. A pregnant girl got Italian bread, extra mayo, white cheese, salt and pepper. She also smelled like an ashtray and her breath was strong. She wore boxers and a Mickey Mouse shirt. I have never been so disgusted. Ex sandwich artist, here, grey haired, granny, three times a day, six inch seafood, and tuna, extra light mayo, olives, and the equivalent of a whole onion. Again, three times a day, she was a close talker with an attitude. No amount of sneeze guard could save us. I had a regular who would come in and order a foot long wheat with American cheese and honey mustard, but I mean a lot of it, like, this sucker used up at least the majority of the bottle, and every time I closed the sandwich, honey mustard went to spewing all across the floor. Probably gonna get buried, but I worked at Subway for 2.5 years, and was manager for a year. I have some really crazy stories. 1. Woman ordered foot long veggie on wheat, had me carve out the breading on the inside and fill it with mayo, lightly sprinkle it with olives, line of buffalo, and wrap it up. I nearly gagged. 2. I had a guy order a triple meat feast plus bacon. For the uninitiated, a feast is a spicy and club, 
8 salami, 8 pepperoni, 2 turkey, 2 roast beef, 2 ham, so 24 salami, 24 pepperoni, 6 turkey, 6 roast beef, 6 ham, 4 bacon, double cheese, 8 slices, all veggies, all sauces. I can't remember what it cost but it was at least $15.18. 3. We sold a single party platter for a planet fitness function. They requested 5 bottles of mayo. 4. A guy apparently asked if my co-worker could warm up a few unbaked cookies from the freezer and put them on top of his sandwich. 5. Had a bee try to tell me my pepperoni was stale to get a refund. B it comes irradiated and covered in salt. I've seen subways leave that crap out for days and it's still servable. Frick you. I replace everything. 6. Guy said he wanted me to proof and cook his bread in front of him separately while not in forms with other bread. Roll the oats in front of him. And then make the sandwich. Normally I would have told him to frick off and eat a bag of dongs. But I was working third shift and already had my prep for the day done and was just about to start bread so I said frick it and did it. He didn't tip me. Butthole. 7. Dude stoned off his rocker wanted me to fill his sandwich with marinara sauce. I didn't have a line so I just said frick it and did it. He ended up tipping me like $10. Fist bump. Dude had marinara on any sandwich he wanted from then on. But I only saw him like two more times. This. This right here. My first job. At the age of 16 was as a sandwich artist at a subway in a small town. About two months into the job. I was still somewhat of a novice, but learning the ropes rather well. Anyways, I am working one sunny afternoon, when a somewhat large, middle-aged woman walks through the door. The first words out of her mouth weren't hello or how are you it was, everything for my son. I am caught off guard by her accent. It's very distinct, and I believe it to be Russian. It's very thick, and she sounds like a heavy smoker, and I, for the life of me, cannot understand what she is saying. What, I say, everything for son she smiles and awaits her order. He a big boy, he must eat. At least this is what I think she said. I, in disbelief, say what again. And after she repeats it, I call over another worker to help me. Our subway was too cheap to have a supervisor on duty. Sometimes, and not even they, understand. So we just go along with whatever the woman wants. She wants everything. And by that, I simply mean... Every. Single. Meat. Available. And I gave her one foot long on Italian herbs and cheese with. Salami. Pepperoni. Ham. Turkey. Steak. Chicken teriyaki. Chick breast. Bacon. 12 pieces. Meatballs. Provolone. Shredded cheddar. American. Pepper jack. Toasted. She wanted onions. Olives. Jalapenos. All topped off with chipotle. By the time I finished, I couldn't even close the sub. It was huge, it was nasty, and it was a heart attack on bread. I let the other worker ring her out because I was so confused. It was during rush hour, and I had no idea what to charge her. My co-worker charged her 30 bucks, which I think was too cheap. So that's my story. I was thinking about getting Subway for dinner after work. I am totally going in and asking for everything for sun and seeing what I get. We'll report back. Just feels relevant. I went to a subway sandwich shop, and I said, let me have a bun, but she wouldn't sell me just her bun. She said it had to have something on it. She told me it's against regulations for subway to sell just a bun. I guess the two halves ain't supposed to touch. So, I said, alright, put some lettuce on it, which they did. They said, that'll be $1.75. I said, it's for a duck. They said, alright. Well then it's free. See, I did not know that. Ducks eat for free at Subway. Had I known that, I would have ordered a much larger sandwich. Lem have the steak fajita sandwich, but don't bother ringing it up. It's for a duck. There are six ducks out there, and they all want sun chips. Mitch Hedberg. I work in a rather small town Subway, so the weirdest sub requests I get are usually from outsiders or tourists. This one I'm about to tell you about is from a couple weeks ago. This foreign lady walks in with a herd of loud, obnoxious, untamable children at 9.55pm. FL. Two foot long herb and cheese. Me. Alright. And which sub would you like? FL. Toast. 
Me. Would you like me to toast the bread before I put anything on? Or would you like me to toast the bread with some meat and cheese on it? FL. Number. Toast. So I toast that crap. Me. Would you like some meat cheese? FL in her weird accent. Bacon. Crispy. So I pick out the crispiest bacon I find in the heating unit. Crap was dark brown and ready to fall apart. FL. Crispier. So I toast that crap for 30 seconds. That's how long you toast a foot long sub. Crap was a burning wreck when I took it out. I'm talking black. The bacon was black. As frick. FL. Salami. So I place cold salami slices on top of her now super crispy cold bread with burnt bacon. Meanwhile her children are just running around screaming. Playing with the doorbell and whatnot, Causing a scene. FL. Cream cheese sauce. Me. I'm sorry but we don't carry cream cheese sauce. FL. Cheese. So I put cold cheese on that disgustingly hard and crispy sandwich. FL. Pickles. Onions. Cucumber. Lettuce. I'm about to be done with this so I'm just looking forward to closing up and going home. FL. Cheese sauce. Pizza sauce. Spicy mustard. Me. Would you like salt and pepper? FL. Salt. FL's car doesn't go through. She says she's going to the car to get monies. Herds her kids out. Drives off with a screech. Awkward. Yep. Number. TL. DR. B was crispy as crap. A guy came in ordering a bunch of lettuce, tomatoes, and onions. That's it. He said he was trying to lose weight when I asked why he got all that. Finally. I can be relevant. I had a customer come in on several occasions. I haven't seen him in a while. That ordered. Oven roasted chicken breast. Chicken teriyaki. Turkey breast. Tuna. American cheese. Shredded Monterey cheddar cheese. Toasted. Lettuce. Pickles. Spicy mustard. All on the same motherfucking sandwich. Imagine the struggle to close this monstrosity for a moment. And this was full portions of every kind of meat and cheese. So. 8 pieces of turkey, 4 scoops of tuna, 2 trays of teriyaki, and 2 pieces of chicken breast. After over 4 years, I've learned not to judge. I mean, I eat chicken bacon and cheese with lettuce, pickles, sweet onion sauce, ranch, honey mustard, oil and vinegar, and all of the shakes. Take the tuna out and that sandwich would be amazing. I don't have a customer, I have me. As an artist I like to experiment sometimes, and most of the time it's good. My most relevant is the crabby patty, veggie patty with crab salad on top, spinach, onions and banana peppers toasted, olives, honey mustard and brown mustard after. It's better than you think. Also, as an aside, if you ever order cucumbers and pickles, extra of either, we think you're pregnant, even if you're male, doesn't matter. Pickles are delicious, you judgmental butthole. Maybe not gross, just weird. I was a sandwich artist, one of my more illustrious titles, for two years. My favorite was a guy who came in, got some footlong sub, was going through the ingredients he wanted, when suddenly he covered his eyes and said and one jalapeno slice, but don't show me where it is. I like to be surprised. I also had a guy come in a lot who would order a meatball sub and asked me to cut his balls in half. That first guy's probably has the same tan bowl of cereal every morning, and the same bland pot roast every night, but at lunch, he lives. I worked at Subway for a year. We had this overweight mother and daughter come in once in a while. They would get very basic subs like turkey or ham. That was normal. But then they would ask for mayo to be put under the meat. Makes sense. If you think about it. But then they would ask for more mayo. Mayo on top of lettuce. Then some veggies. Then more mayo. The mayo wasn't really the problem. It was them starting to breathe heavy. With just a small tip of their tongue sticking out. While I was laying the white stuff on their food that I thought was a bit strange. Not a subway worker. But you guys know that worst customer sub thing that's soaked and burnt and falling apart? A guy in front of me ordered that. I crap you not. I stood behind him trying not to lose it while the guy tried to make the sandwich. Former sandwich artist here. I once thought the grossest sandwich order was a meatball with mustard until a customer requested a sandwich that took the cake. 
It started off as a regular meatball sub with provolone cheese on top and toasted to perfection. As was usual with meatball subs, the customer stuck to light veggies with a bit of lettuce and black olives, but then we got to condiments. This customer asked for one squirt of every type of dressing on his meatball sub, and I mean everything. We're talking mayo, yellow mustard, spicy mustard, ranch, chipotle, BBQ sauce, buffalo sauce, olive oil, red vinegar, you name it, he wanted it on his sandwich. The sandwich artist in me wept as I complied with his request. I wrapped up his sandwich and rang him up trying to make as little eye contact as possible. All I could think of was how he had successfully ruined what could have been a delightful sandwich. TL. DR. Customer turned a meatball sub into a nasty turd sandwich. This is my monstrosity. Italian herbs and cheese bun. Meatballs. Salami. Bacon. Schnitzel. Avocado. Tuna. Ham. Lettuce. Because of health and crap. Barbecue sauce. This crap is delicious. Used to cost like $15 until they brought in the double meat price and now it's like $25. Although I always get stares when eating it. Those mother suckers don't know what they are missing out on. This actually happened today. A guy came in and asked for a meatball marinara with tuna and barbecue sauce. I cannot think of two worse meats to put together. Has anyone revealed a reason for the all-encompassing subway smell that seems to linger on everything it nears? Please, explain its prevalence and consistency. Okay, so mine's not bad compared to anything here, but I'll post it anyways as it usually causes my father to retch. Footlong meatball marinara. Hit that bee up with extra marinara sauce, pepperoni, and mozzarella. Toast the crap out of that mother, then smack some salt pepper, oregano, and parmesan cheese on it. Sounding normal right? Wrong? Then comes the mustard. And I don't mean a pea amount of mustard either, like one line doesn't do it. No man. Go to have a metric fuckton of that crap on there. The marinara sauce is freaking yellow when I am done saying more. Then I go home and eat it with about 5 lass each dill spear pickles. Freaking love pickles and mustard. What are the most unsafe work practices you have witnessed? A guy I used to work with at a fruit and veg store liked to throw the machetes for one spin and catch them. The same guy also liked to do C before work. The same guy had to find a new job when he lost his finger in a cauliflower palette. Place was a freaking crack house with lettuce. Minimum wage work is grim. I learned to juggle knives in the produce department of a grocery store. Also learned a ceiling fan can't cut an orange at any speed. There was a flood in the basement of our bar where the beer was kept. I was sent in with a shop vac and a frayed extension cord to suck up the beer fridge flood water. One vacuum load at a time, with frayed extension cord balanced perilously above the water on beer cases. And then told to dump the water down a massive hole in another part of the basement that led into the foundation. Yeah frick that, you're literally ruining the building. Worked in a school in a special needs program. This was a middle school age program but most of the kids weren't toilet trained. We'd have accidents in the room almost daily and staff pretty much got into the routine of cleaning it up on our own if it was just pee. We figured a, can't call the janitors down here 4 times a day. That alone I'm pretty sure is an OSHA violation as none of us are properly trained. Datas of last year though janitors were getting pee off that they were being called down to clean up little crap storms. Sorry nothing I can do if a kid comes into school already with a full freaking pull up of crap and he goes up a shit when he comes into school because it's probably uncomfortable as heck. So our supervisor went in to handle this with the school janitors and came back with a very lovely solution okay so from now on we're just cleaning this all up by ourselves. Dart yay. No. I'm not. Sorry. Not my job. You already pay well below the average for aids in the states and we're in a rich district. Dot we don't even have the supplies to handle this safely in our room, we usually use baby wipes. I will absolutely not be handling this completely untrained. So I left that school for the same position in a neighboring school district where everything is by the books. I actually get health insurance and about a 50% pay bump to be 5 steps lower. Dot last I heard this crap keeps getting worse. Sounds about right. Some employers just blow my mind. People who know what they're worth will go get it, and they are all surprised when they're stuck with horrible employees.
I work in a warehouse and we used to have a maintenance man that was pretty crazy. There are a couple of stories that come to mind, but my favorite has to be the time he was trying to take apart this very old press brake that's around 12 feet tall so we could scrap sell it off. At one point there was a motor that wouldn't come off that was located near the top of the machine. After about an hour or two of trying to pry the sumbitch off with whatever method he could think of, he decided that he needed to ram it with a forklift. Usually I'm not in the area that he is supposed to be working, but there is no way in heck I was going to miss this golden opportunity to witness something truly magnificent as someone jousting a machine. He took off on the forklift like only a true knight of Camelot would and smashed forks first right into the machine. Unfortunately for the story nothing really exciting happened. He just rammed it and there was a lot of bouncing on his end. Not the first or last time I watched that man work and asked myself am I going to watch Larry die today. But of course he was named Larry. I worked at one company for about 10 years. From the time I was hired until about 8 years in, the company was involved in a lawsuit. Some guy had removed some machine safeties and got one of his hands cut off. You would think that the company would have learned but, I was tasked to write control software for a saw system. The software controlled all aspects of the saw. One of the things we programmed in was the ability to connect remotely to the system to see some diagnostics values. Nothing harmful in that right? Well, the upper level management insisted that I program in the ability to connect to the saw system and take over running the saw regardless of what the operator was doing at the time. I pointed out that someone in a sealed room would be able to do whatever they wanted and the machine operator would be in a dangerous situation. And if I was the operator, I would find a way to figure out who did it and kick their butt for them. Management decided that it would be perfectly safe to start running a saw system without being able to actually see the machine or communicate with the machine operator. I refused. Probably contributed to getting laid off but would do it again. I'm a CNC machinist and the idea of someone being able to start my machine remotely is terrifying and infuriating. I 100% would hunt someone down and introduce my foot to their butt. Thanks for not letting it happen. As a new nurse I was hired at a small high monk, blood disorders and cancer medicine clinic. There were multiple things they did wrong but a few stuck out. I saw the nurse who was training me uncap an IV needle with her teeth. None of the practices I had learned in school, gowns and double gloves for especially toxic chemo drugs, were put into place. The two employees who had been there the longest had both been diagnosed with cancer. I quit pretty quickly. Please tell me you reported them to OSHA the health board. I heard this story of a refinery expansion. They required a very large crane. And there are only a few of these in the US. The crane operator had a huge beard and demanded the ability to smoke while he ran the crane. The refinery had a no beard policy, and you can't smoke in one so they demanded a new crane operator, but he was the only one available for like 4 months. They ended up setting up a special exemption area for this guy but if there were any gas leaks or releases beard man was fricked. It's funny to imagine beard man telling this story to his buddy in a bar somewhere. So I told these pansy suckers frick you. I keep my frickin beard and I fricking smoke when I want. If you don't like it frick you. And went back to work clinks bottles. Ed. SP. I'm gonna cheat here. Because I only saw the aftermath. A friend in high school worked at Wendy's. And she was doing cleaning. There was a vent that needed cleaning. So she climbed onto the counter. This counter happened to be the one right next to the deep fryer. Her foot slips, and she is mid-cuff deep into the deep fryer that was still on. She had her foot wrapped up for a long while after that, but showed me her foot. Yeah, don't make people stand on top of counters to clean anything. Ever. There's a lot that can go wrong. Falling into a deep fryer is one of my fears now. Was in Spain with So and her family, and wanted to buy ice cream. Was looking forward to 3 scoops of Tastrophil cold. Right behind the counter a fluorescent lamp dropped from the ceiling and exploded into shards. Some fell into the ice. The people behind the counter removed the visible pieces of glass, but otherwise did nothing. Did not eat ice cream that day. The insides of the lights also contain mercury vapor and phosphor, so good choice. Employees would plug in electric space heaters, brought in from home, because management kept the heat set too low, 52 degrees. Trouble is, the building had outdated electric service and wiring. 
workers would smell insulation starting to get hot just before circuit breakers would trip or a screw in fuse would blow. Just put a quarter into the fuse box and you'll never blow another fuse. I was on a photo assignment at a cedar shake mill in northern Vancouver Island in BC. That's a place where they make cedar shakes for roofing. There I saw some of the craziest workplace dangers I've ever seen. First was the bucking floor where the logs are cut to length. This is done with several guys standing on a slick stainless steel floor with large chains running across it that pull huge logs into the corner where, after an all clear signal is given, a I crap you not. 6 foot diameter spinning saw blade with teeth laid 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 with it goes through a 3 foot diameter long in about 1.5 seconds. It's surely terrifying. But that was nothing compared to the last job I photographed in that mill. There was a kid whose job it was to make sure that the chipper didn't get jammed. You see there is what they call a shake table which is like a conveyor belt of sorts but it operates by shaking violently in such a way that material is moved along due to the vibration. It feeds pieces of cedar that were unfit for use in the roofing materials into a big slick metal chute that leads directly to the absolutely massive chipper shredder. So this guy's job is to make sure that nothing gets stuck in the mouth of the chute. Okay right. So I'm photographing this kid as he is standing on the shake table, with no safety harness, literally above the chute that goes straight to the chipper. That chipper turns a log 2 feet long and 2 feet wide into cedar mulch in less than a half second. He would slip and slide around up there while holding a pike pole to push logs down into the chute. At times he would get out over the chute itself and kick them down with his feet. I never saw anything that insane at any other job site ever. I photographed these things at the beginning of my career almost 24 years ago. I'm still shaking remembering it today. If I've learned anything from living in BC my whole life, it's that the forestry industry is no freaking joke. Every couple years someone from my town gets taken out by an accident at a logging camp. Heck. The grade 12 citizenship award at my high school was named after a kid that received the award, went off to a camp, and was dead within a month. My boss made us serve food in an asbestos ridden kitchen after the ceiling collapsed, went out on a delivery some Saturday afternoon, which are usually deadly slow, went out with some food to a bank and when I came back the dishes were stacked up to my eyeballs. There were like two tables seated so there shouldn't be so many dishes to wash. I didn't even think and jumped right into the dishwashing station, and the dishes and pans and ladles were coming in fast. The chefs, don't speak much English were all white in the face and like sad looking. I was extremely confused before I took a look around the kitchen and the freaking ceiling collapsed on the other end of room. I now know I am not an observant person. There was insulation and drywall peppered on every surface. My boss comes out, takes a drag off his cigarette and said we're not closing. Clean this up. I really wished a health inspector came in. Some people ate asbestos that day. Fricked up. I would have quit on the spot and called the city about that. My previous job was at a large factory with super strict safety policies. Fast forward to my first week at current job, a teeny tiny sheet metal fabrication shop. We had this table with four drill presses mounted to it. The one I was using was set at its highest speed, and was shooting red hot steel shavings at me. I asked the guy training me if he could show me how to lower the speed. Guy uses a rolling chair to climb up onto the table, explaining that you have to manually move the belt in the top of the machine to change the speed. Then he asks me to hold the fluorescent light out of his way while he is up there, as it is hanging 3 inches above the press. I grab a broom and use it to keep the light away from his head as he works, and that's when the supervisor walks up with a horrified look on his face. I think to myself, this is it, we're getting fired for violating about 6 safety laws. The supervisor asks, did the belt break? Guy yells down to him no, just changing the speed. Horrified look turns to relief as the supervisor explains that the machine was built in 1942, and we can't find replacement belts for it anymore, so if one breaks we're screwed. Then he causally walks away. It was then that I realized we were operating on a Darwinian system for safety, rather than any of those pesky OSHA laws. Same as every garage I've ever worked in. The most common thing is people not wearing seatbelts in their fork trucks. 
Fork trucks are stable but heavy loads shift the center of gravity and change your safety triangle. How you accelerate in turn can push you into the tipping zone. Wearing your seatbelt increases the chances of you staying in place so you don't get crushed by the roll cage. Nah, I'll just be extra careful. I worked at a soup and sandwich place. Wasn't a cafe but wasn't a restaurant. A customer complained about their soup being cold. So I take it to the back and tell my sad excuse for a shift leader what was going on. She proceeds to take the restroom water, where we heat the soups up in bags and also clean with lime and I think bleach, and put that disgusting water in the person's cup and proceeds to serve it. I was mortified. Jesus, that's just malicious. Just my kit for 30 seconds. Lady, I understand getting frustrated when food is sent back, but it's not exactly difficult to reheat soup FFS. I guess not in safe but my WTF is wrong with this company moment. I worked at a water park and one of the cooks in the kitchen sliced his hand with a knife. It definitely needed stitches. Instead of taking him to the hospital they brought him back to the first aid office that worked in, I basically just put band. Aids on little kids that had scraped their knees and coached people what to do about their bloody noses. That was about the limit of our first aid without calling 911. One of the outdoor managers came into the first aid office and super glued this guy's hand. I don't know if the company was too cheap to deal with a workman's comp claim or if the guy couldn't pass the drug test you get after filing a workman's comp claim or what was going on. I understand super glue can be used to close some cuts but this cut 10 stroke 10 needed stitches and a tetanus shot. Witnessed the following practice then had to do it myself. Sitting on the edge of a massive block of granite. Hundreds of feet from the bottom of the granite quarry, then leaning so far over the edge. Three or four of my co-workers kept me from plummeting to my death by holding the ends of a strap that was wrapped around my waist. While held like this I used a plug drill, a sort of half-sized jackhammer, to bore a fist-sized hole in the granite so the dog could fit in it. The dogs are what you call the hooks that hang beneath the block and tackle on the crane. Might get buried, but I actually just witnessed a few the other day. I just started working at an unnamed hazardous waste incineration facility about 2 months ago. It's a heck of an interesting place to work because we feed liquid and shredded solid waste into the 8 story unit, which vaporizes it instantly in a 1600 degree fire tornado. 4 times a year we shut down to pull everything apart and clean replace a bunch of parts and pieces. One of which sessions we just completed this week. Now Osher and the EPA are about 9 fingers deep in the plant's butthole about safety, but there are tons of ways around all of their mandated measures, like lockout tag out, and it seems like our supervisors love taking those shortcuts to speed up production. My job is to mix our solid wastes in a set of giant hoppers with a clamshell crane, and then feed it into the conveyor system via another hopper. The waste is carried six floors up to a pair of chutes where it is then fed into the unit. As part of our shutdown procedure we run the conveyors clean off to unplug all the waste that gets crammed in nooks and crannies. Dry waste being fed into the incinerator acts as a sort of check valve. A plug of waste about two feet thick prevents fire from leaving the unit and shooting a massive fireball into the building where I mix and feed. Well. Early this week we ran the conveyors clean and some genius decides it's a good time to clean out the top of the waste chute while the unit is still on. It's a terrible idea, but there's a lockout procedure for a special slide gate that can cover that feed chute and close it off to be cleaned out. There's a short radio conversation between my co-worker and my supervisor discussing the merits of closing the slide gate. Said conversation ends in ah, frick it, it'll take too long. Co-worker unbolts the 150 pound hatch, which proceeds to blow off with the force of a rail gun, and the 1600 degree incinerator begins shooting 60 foot long fireballs out of what is essentially just an airport in its side. Fire alarms go off, people freak, and we have the fire under control about half an hour later. As soon as the fire is out, my supervisor asks me to go down to the basement level of my building to see if there was any fire damage on the main conveyor. I was half suited up when one of my, good, co-workers stopped me and advised me to wait another half an hour, because the unit was still prone to shooting fireballs down my conveyor, which my supervisor neglected to tell me. That guy didn't even get written up, neither did my supervisor. Yikes. 
I saw a wild house sparrow fly into the bakery section of a supermarket, land on exposed bread and eat a bit before flying deeper into the bakery's inner workings. Not a single employee appeared to do anything. Does that count? If you saw one, there are more. Check the pet care aisle, and look for birdseed. Once, I observed a trapped sparrow peck open a bag of sunflower seeds, then flit away to its hiding place up in the ceiling. 2 inch lengths of copper tubing in place of fuses. 126 degree workspace with 6 hour exposure and no one checked on the person. Frequent meetings held in 105-110 dB workspace. Human chain passing 20 pound steel rods up and down a 30 foot wet ladder in the dark. Swaying 50 foot long 2 foot wide wet. Steep stairway used to move staff and hand carried equipment. Nurses not informing visiting adults the child they're visiting carries a skin virus that is easily communicable. I'm imagining all these are in the same place. Steel furnace is down a wet stairway right next to the contagion ward. At our cafe, we clean with white vinegar. White vinegar can be a great cleaner that is super cheap to use for day to day cleaning in a restaurant. Bleach is also a great way to clean floors and plastic containers. But, they must be kept separate we train them to use one for X and the other for Y. Then, you get someone who doesn't follow the rules and uses vinegar on the floors one day. It did a great job of cleaning the floors. Let's keep doing this without telling anyone that the mops are full of vinegar. This closer does this all week. The next closer sees that the mops are super dirty and decides to bleach them overnight. So, we have mops that have been in vinegar water all week and bleach water made to clean the mops. Everything seemed fine until the next morning when I arrived at work and noticed a smell. Opened the mop closet door and immediately slammed it shut. Opened the outside door as I yelled for help. I made it 5 feet before I was on the ground and couldn't do anything but cough. One lost their job that week over not being able to follow directions and almost killing their boss. It was horrible. My poor manager was running around like a chicken looking for my keys to drive me to the clinic that was less than one stroke two mile away. I was on my hands and knees crawling to try and reach the van as I watched him run around the van like a dope. Restaurant with concrete floors. Employee A cleaning floor with bleach. Employee B cleaning floor with muriatic acid. A match made in a chlorine gas egg. I used to work for a containment company and we used mesh sheets with polyurea sprayed on it for containment. In order to make the sheets the polyurea has to be mixed in a machine which gets pumped through a hose that we use to spray the mesh sheets. We're supposed to wear respirators when we work with it but a lot of the guys did not. Polyurea is a known carcinogen so a lot of the guys at work were breathing in cancer causing liquid rubber fumes. My favorite is when they would smoke and spray at the same time for that double dose of pimping cancer. One time we had to clean up the lab of recently retired professor. That included 40 years of very toxic chemicals and various states of disarray. There was also HF just in random 50 milliliters centrifuge tubes. After opening one cabinet, I breathed something in and had go walk outside until I didn't feel dizzy. I put a respirator, with an expired filter, on after that. Fun times in grad school. Dude unjammed a full pallet on a rolling rack 20 feet up by pushing on it until it and the two pallets behind it got unstuck and started rolling towards him. He jumped back into the scissor lift before it knocked him off the edge. I don't know what the proper OSHA approved procedure would be, but I've got a hunch it's not that. He does this like twice a week. Please report him, or he will hurt himself or others. Working as an English teacher in China. I worked there from 2002 to 2014. In the last few years, it wasn't so bad, but back in 2002 to 2008 before Beijing had the Olympics, it was pretty bad. Schools would hire foreign teachers who were clearly degenerate maniacs perverts possible pedophiles, and not do any kind of background check criminal record check. There were creepy 50 year old men, working with children during the day, and spending all their money on prostitutes during the evenings. And if you know China at all, a fair amount of their prostitutes are underage. Now please don't put me on Arbadus or Arthathapan or whatever, but I was disciplined at my school and nearly got in trouble with the police for punching a 55 year old Australian man in the face for saying she's a pretty girl. Look at her. She knows it in regards to an 8 year old girl. He was eventually let go, but still continued to work after that. Insane stories. 
I don't even bother telling them to people because they truly seem unbelievable. Pretty much me anytime I'm on the forklift. I've also got a cord my supervisor calls the cord of death it's a male plug on both ends for powering up these panels we work on it saves me a few minutes each time over wiring up the panel properly. But if you unplug the wrong end first and touch it you're going to get a little 120 volt tickle. I've got an OSHA 10 card, but all it did was tell me all of the dangerous things I did, and still do. Every dangerous job I have had ever, okay, you should never ever do this, with detailed explanation how to do it, separated by this is honestly freaking lethal, run if and doubt things that you actually never ever should do cause someone explodes or burns. Oh man, I used to work for specialty food produce company as a graphic designer photographer, I often had to go into the giant warehouse to get the products to take pictures of, including produce. The rule was if I didn't have to cut the fruit open, after I took the picture, I would bring it back to the warehouse where they would put it back in the case to sell. This was borderline unhygienic, but was okay until I got whopping cough. The company had no paid sick leave and I could not afford to take time off. I was at work. I told my boss and company heads that I was very sick and that whopping cough was contagious for a while. Even while I started treatment, they told me that I had to come to work or I would get fired. I told them that if I had to be at work, then I should probably just stay in my office away from people, and I definitely shouldn't go into the warehouse to handle food and that food absolutely should not be put back to sell. No go. I asked for a face mask and gloves, they said, maybe next quarter. I still had to go into the warehouse every day coughing and hacking and spreading my illness all over the produce that then went out all over the country and into people's mouths. TLDR. I spread whopping cough because my company is horrible. For the love of god report them to OSHA or maybe the CDC. I worked as a manager in an aquarium some time ago. The treatment of the animals due to lack of funding was appalling. We once had to euthanize an 8 foot conger eel. Burst swim bladder, but hadn't enough of the necessary chemical. The poor animal got dragged out, put head first in large wheelie bin half full of water which then had around 200 alka seltzer dumped in, then just left locked away for 3 days. We also had no method of disposing of the body, so they wheeled it down the pier and chucked it off. Jesus Christ, at that point it's more humane to beat its head in. Worked on an oil tanker for a brief stint. Chief officer told me in the same day to work in an enclosed space, full of fumes, easy to die, without filling in a permit to work, legal requirement, or allowing me to use the equipment for checking atmosphere, and to work on top of the crane. No work permit for working at height either, without a harness. Never working on a tanker again, freaking death traps, currently on a towel ship, much nicer here. Huge work mistake. Forgot an airline crew in a McDonald's in Portugal for 5 days. What's your biggest work related mistake? Right after 9-11 happened, I had to go from Chicago to our New York City data center. We're a stock exchange broker, and this data center was 2 blocks from ground zero. There was talk that Nasdaq wouldn't be up and we would have to take over orders for them and trim. While we had 6,000 servers in Chicago, we really needed to get our 4,500 in NYC up too, so we're hustling and taking shortcuts when we could to try to get things up and running. Cooling tower drained, cleaned, refilled, a big bus semi-trailer sized generator dropped off, begin to fire everything up, we're looking good, now it's time to start the backup system power smoothing and switch from mains to it. Now this power smoothing system was an ancient beast, we inherited from the previous owners, which was a big iron mainframe setup from the 60s. Now it smoothed power by using a flywheel. I don't know how it all worked, and it had never needed to be restarted before, so this was all new to me, a young 24 year old sysadmin. The flywheel was a 10 foot high solid concrete wheel that weighed 4 tons. It spun at 5000 RPMs. To start it, you took off an access door, applied power to the system, and gave it a little nudge. There was an arrowing chalk pointing one way, so I nudged it in that direction and it began spinning up. After 2 hours, when it was fully up to speed, you took a timing light and shined it at it to make sure it was going the right way. Yes, the system could run in either direction. So, all looks well, 
So I grab this huge lever that looks like it's right out of a Shelley novel and slowly push it from bypass to active. As soon as the lever went past the T inactive we heard a dozen large booms. And then a bunch of smaller booms. Complete darkness. Apparently at some point in time the wheel needed maintenance. And when they were done, they put it on backwards. So the arrow was pointing in the wrong direction. So instead of positive voltage, I was sending thousands of volts of negative voltage to all of the PDUs in the battery racks. As you could imagine, they don't expect that kind of thing. The big booms were the $50,000 power distribution units exploding. The smaller ones were all of the control circuitry for the UPS. And that's not even the worst bit. So all these booms happen. Then it's dead quiet. We managed to destroy this semi-trailer sized rental generator. But remember how I said it was a 4 ton flywheel? And it took 2 hours to come up to speed? It took roughly that long for it to spin down, as well. And I didn't flip the lever back to bypass. So this system is still pumping voltage. 6 fires later. It cost the company close to 2.5 million dollars to get the system working again. And it took over 3 weeks of around the clock work. We're talking replacing everything. The PDUs. The switching system. Even the wires down to the street. Didn't get fired though. Dang I miss that place. That's not really your fault though. That's the fault of the maintenance guys who put the flywheel on backward. Now. Not switching back to bypass. Maybe. But I could understand the oh crap. I just killed everything reaction making you reticent to touch ancient looking equipment. It Throw away. For obvious reasons. I was working on one of those TV shows where you do stupid things in public and film people's reactions. In the skit we were doing, a man would be jogging with a stroller containing a lifelike baby doll. And I was going to hit him with a car. The jogger was wearing bright green. They dress funny on these shows so that you don't mix up the cast with pedestrians. So I'm cruising up to the stop sign in a beat up old Ford, my adrenaline is really pumping, this was my first time actually being involved in a skit. I see the bright green jumpsuit, and I gun it, I hit the wrong guy, it was just some dude jogging with his kid, I realized what happened when the guy I hit didn't jump onto the hood the way you're supposed to in these stunts. I honestly don't remember anything about the incident after that, I was in shock, the dad had a few broken bones, the baby was fine. Needless to say there was a huge settlement paid out. I'm currently pursuing an unrelated career. Moral of the story. Dress as normal as possible while in public. My dad always tells of a story when he, an electrician, plugged in some wires backwards and blew up a $10,000 piece of equipment. His boss was really cool though and told him just consider this a $10,000 investment in your education. When I was a kid I used to work at Hess. It was one of those one man stations where the attendant sits in a little booth in the center of the pumps. This was before the days where you could pay at the pump. You would go to the booth, give your credit card to the cashier, through the little S under the plexiglass, and he would open your pump. One day, one of the pumps jammed, and I had to go out to fix it, as the station was very busy. I hurried out to the pump, and only after I heard the click of the door closing behind me did I realize I had locked myself out of the booth. Needless to say, the variety of people who were trying to get gas and now couldn't were quite upset. Not quite as upset as the people who had their credit cards locked inside the booth, though. I ended up having to call my manager at home from a payphone to bring another key to let me back in. I was left dealing with irate customers for the hour it took him to arrive, and turn away other irate potential customers who I had to turn away, one whom was completely out of gas and stuck there. My manager had a chuckle when he arrived and I late learned that this eventually happened to everyone, and that you could use the stick used to measure the gas levels in the tank to push through the tiny slot in the front through the booth to unlock the door. Comma give your credit card to the cashier through the little s under the plexiglass. Best payment method ever. Used or equals rather than equals in a bulk email sent to clients business partners. First recipient got 900 emails. Second 899. Third 898. So on and so forth. You have my bang. I accidentally knocked over two aisles filled with wine glasses. Lucky for me. Everyone was too busy freaking the frick out. There was apparently a customer nearby who also got a few cuts on his legs. 
that they didn't notice me slowly slipping away and reappearing a few seconds later to ask what happened. No one ever suspected it was me, but I still felt horrible because it was over a few thousand dollars worth of stuff that I broke, which may not sound like much, but when you're 15 years old working on $11 HR, 5 hours a week, I thought you said they didn't notice me slowly sipping away like you were standing there with a glass of wine watching. I left a huge legal folder for a multi-billion, with a B, lawsuit on the subway. Some homeless guy finds it, calls the opposing attorney and ransoms the dang thing. Luckily there was nothing in the file that wasn't secret or not public record. Needless to say I was fired. Counter intel. Start leaving fake legal folders where bums can find them. Accidentally sent out the salaries of every one of our executives and the owner to about 100 people in the company. The TL. DR. Is that I requested info from HR. Just a list of eligible employees for something. And what they sent had the default sheet 1 slash sheet 2 slash sheet 3 tabs at the bottom of the workbook. Sheet 1 was the list I had requested. Sheet 2 was for some reason. Executive compensation. It sucked. Please disregard earlier message. Those numbers were not salaries. They were just scores in our fantasy football league. Accidentally uploaded the email templates to the wrong website. The email template I uploaded was from an organic farm company with a message like if we don't get back to you soon, we're probably knee deep in mud. The company I uploaded it to, yup, funeral directors. Killed all power to a stage in a venue with 1200 people raving hard. Longest 30 seconds ever while I switched the broken cable out. I used to be a product merchandiser for Coca Cola a few years ago. Basically what I did was go to grocery stores, meet the driver dropping the delivery and stock the shelves as fast as possible and get to the next store. Repeat. My second day on the job I was stocking 2L bottles at this mega grocery store, running a bit behind because the order came in late so I was moving fast. Dropped a bottle of Sprite on the floor, and it hit cap down. That little bastard shot up in the air and cleared 4 aisles. Luckily it didn't hit anyone. On my last day of working for coke same thing happened, except this time it went flying straight for the cash and nearly hit some lady in the head. As I headed to the back room to get a mop, every employee was lined up applauding. One of them offered to clean it up as it was the funniest thing he'd seen working at the store and that was the last bottle I stocked working for coca cola. Accidentally deleted the email accounts for my entire organization. Stopped the command once I realized what happened but by that time it had wiped out 3 stroke 4s of the mailboxes, including both of the owner's accounts. That was a dark, dark day. I'll always be careful with RMRF from now on though. I had a project to refurbish the sump in a hydrochloric acid containment structure in a refinery. Basically, the HCL tank had a wall around it so that if the tank leaked, the HCL would be contained. Inside the wall was a sump full of water, used to scrub out the fumes when the tank was filled. Never mind, this sump was full of very acidic water, and even after pumping it out and flushing it several times, the pH was zero. Yes, zero. Well. We couldn't use the special epoxy to repair the cracked concrete until the pH was like 2 or something, so I suggested that we put some NAO into the next flush to try to bring the pH up enough. The manager in charge said, good idea, just fill it with straight caustic, the industry term for NAO. That wasn't my intention, but I went along, and when we came back the next day, the sump was gone, gone. The NAO had just eaten the HCL soaked concrete in a frenzy of reactive chemistry. Now, for those of you who remember your high school chemistry, HCL plus NAO, NaCl plus H2O. For those who don't, I had made a puddle of salt water where there had been acid soaked ground before. I'm pretty innocuous, but that's not how the EPA sees things. It was a spill to ground of more than one barrel of NAO and thus a reportable incident. Oh, and the sump was dissolved. My boss was very cool about it and we built a new sump and put it in the big hole I had created. And excellent Alice. Whoa. That's both hilarious and... Scary. Okay. I've come out of the depths of Lurkadon to post this. Here goes.
I used to work for a TV company that makes a lot of high profile shows, including one of the most popular shows on British TV, which is also broadcast around the world. Our client had gone out on location and shot all their footage for an episode of this show and brought it back to my work, only for me to then lose their tapes. The show goes out on a Wednesday night, and it got to the Sunday beforehand and we still couldn't locate 5 of their tapes of footage, because I had put them somewhere and not in the location I logged them into on our system. Everybody chipped in to help look for these tapes, staying behind and pulling 16 hour shifts to search for them, but when push came to shove, we couldn't find them and my company had to pay for the client to reshoot their footage. Not the end of the world, right? Wrong, it turns out that the footage on the tapes I had misplaced had been shot from a goddamn helicopter, so my company had to fork out £18,000 for the camera rentals, the crew and the hire for a dang chopper, and then real kicker is that as soon as they had shot it again, the original tapes turned up, FML, TL, DR, I messed up bad and cost my company £18,000. Probably won't be seen by now but, when I was an MSN tier 2 infrastructure engineer, I deleted all the MX records for the hotmail.com domain, effectively cutting off inbound mail for all of hotmail. It was down for about 5 hours. I hope this doesn't get buried, because this is a good one. I am a chemist, and over the period of about a year I was doing a series of very dangerous reactions. Essentially I had to mix a strong acid with an alcohol solvent and several other chemicals, seal the chemicals in a strong glass bottle, high pressure reactor, seal the bottle, and submerge the reaction vessel in 175 degree C. Silicone oil. If any of you have heated up a closed container, you know this builds internal pressure inside the container. I kept a valve on top of the reactor to monitor the pressure. The container was rated to be safe at pressures up to 150 C. Unfortunately for me, one particular day I started warming up the reaction, and the heat was applied to the solution just fast enough in just the right way to start a runaway polymerization reaction. If you're a chemist you just cringed. This runaway polymerization reaction gave off massive amounts of heat very quickly, thus shooting the pressure of this flask from 130 C to holy heck run for your life. The resulting explosion was so loud it sounded like an 18 wheeler slammed into the side of the building. Luckily for me, and my lab associate, no one was in the room when the explosion went off. Hot shards of glass were shotgunned across the entire room, as well as a nice spray of hot silicone oil. Even worse, this explosion happened right next to the CEO's office. He ran out looking for me, to which I assured him we totally have everything under control. Oh god oh god please don't walk in there and notice I ruined your hundred thousand dollar lab. Luckily the damage to the facilities was minimal. No one was damaged, and I got to keep my job. TL. DR. Caused a massive explosion at work right next to the CEO's office. If I were the CEO of a chemical company, I would definitely not take the office right next to the lab. I used to work on a website that sold very seasonal products. The Friday evening before Halloween. One of the busiest trading times for the site. I was checking things were all okay over SSH. Everything seemed fine so I decided to leave my computer. Typed sudo halt into my terminal without thinking and went and got dinner. Turned out I was still logged into the server and had turned that off instead of my machine. The site was down all weekend, missing out of thousands of pounds of trading. I no longer work on that site. TL. DR. I remotely turned off a web server and got fired. Not my mistake but I think our CEO wins this thread. I used to work for a telecom company and our CEO went to a site to look at our new fiber optic shelter. While going around the shelter he accidentally stepped on fiber that was transmitting more than quarter of the data of our country. All our country had outbound connection problem for 18 hours. It affected more than 10 million people. Oh god, here goes. Working at McDonald's 3 years ago, little kid spills coke on the floor. I happily wander over to clean it up, never was bitter about my job, it's my job, it pays and I chose it, with a mop. Mop that crap up lightning fast with a smile and everybody is happy. Go behind the counter and retrieve the slippery when wet sign to place over the newly cleaned area, and when I get there, distracted by something, I slip, 
My foot slips out like a javelin and kicks a baby's high chair. The baby's head whiplashes against his table so hard both of his shoes fall right off. I just stared in horror at the family. I place the sign down like an idiot and run back behind the kitchen for my dear life. Then I proceeded to crack up in the most maniacal nervous laughter accented with breaths of horror. What had I done? I worked as a cameraman in high school. One night I was working alone at our town hall filming a committee meeting and my boss gave me the keys. I was told to break down and lock up after the shoot. I forgot to lock the town hall. My freaking town hall was wide open for a whole weekend. I realized this after I returned the keys. So for the whole weekend I was freaking out. Thinking everything would be stolen and they would trace this mistake back to me. Nothing was stolen and everything was fine. I've never actually told anyone this before. That sucks. Kyle Gibson. Hope no one finds out. I once worked for a music PR company. My first job was to send a promotional email out to about 1000 journalists. I forgot to BCC every and instead just CC them. 90% of the mailing list and subscribed. As you can imagine that 1000 journos was the PR company's bread and butter. This isn't too bad, but I messed up the logos that were supposed to go on the bottom of a bunch of signs I'd made. I put our organization's logo on the sign, but not the logo of another org working on the project with us. So the solution we figured out was for me to just slice the bottoms off of every sign. No logos. Nobody feels slighted. I still remember the sinking feeling of realizing I was going to be stuck at work till midnight. Cutting off the bottoms of 600 signs with a rusty paper cutter. Until I realized I could call the printer back and ask him to take the signs back and cut them off himself. He saved my butt. I sent him chocolate. Good job with the follow up chocolate. I posted this once before but, I was in the middle of a remote assistance session with a user who was having trouble with his outlook. I resolved his issue and proceeded to send a test email to myself along the lines of test test this is a test. I was doing a million other things at once so I wasn't paying attention to the screen or keyboard. And when I looked at the screen, my heart sank. TT this is a T. Luckily the user I was on the phone with was a good sport and thought it was hilarious. I was pretty mortified. I configured a server, moved it on site at a client, installed and configured apps, all without realizing it was RAID 0 instead of RAID 5. Mission critical data on this box. One year later while on site for a different reason my boss realized what I did. I spent the night there backing up, recreating the array, and restoring. Explanation. RAID 0 means when one hard disk fails you lose everything on all hard disks. RAID 5 means when you lose one hard disk you can replace it without any loss the latter is typical for corporate servers and reliable computers. The former only for temporary data for speed freaks. I worked in a warehouse once unloading trucks of mostly food and sometimes cigarettes. I was unloading a few pallets of cigarettes and accidentally hit the gas instead of the brake. I reamed the boxes. I thought I was fired for sure as reaming a boxes of cigarettes costs quite a bit. $50 a carton slash 30 cartons a box. Turned out I missed the Marlboros and hit some mini cigars that were packed on top. Things are like $5 a carton. Boss was happy he didn't have to fire me for it so it worked out. Another time I ran the thing into a shelf, which knocked it over and then knocked over the one next to it like dominoes. I didn't have a driver's license at the time so I'm not really sure why they kept having me drive that forklift. Now I'm behind a computer screen away from heavy machinery. I'm sure everyone is safer for it. Good, good, now, let go of the mouse, and back away slowly from the computer. I work for a lighting manufacturing company. We sold a huge amount of light fixtures to UPS that they were using in their warehouse facilities. Imagine a huge order with skids and skids of shrink wrapped fixtures. Everything was going great. Even was asked to step up the delivery day to meet a deadline. Told them sure. No problem. Fixtures make it to the job site. Except. They arrive in FedEx trucks. I did not live that one down for a long long time. I broke a champagne flute at a wedding once. It was one of the bride and groom's matched set. I was picking up cake plates and saw the glass on the edge of the table. Told myself be really careful. That's at a bad spot and then proceeded to tap it just enough to knock it off the table to the ground. Shattered. 
The glasses were crystal and a family heirloom passed down through their Jewish family from before the Holocaust. I have never felt more guilty or terrible in my life. I still think about it sometimes and want to curl up in a ball and die. TL. DR. There's nothing quite so anticlimactic as being destroyed by a clumsy waiter after surviving the Holocaust. Forgot a semicolon in a 25k line firewall infrastructure configuration fire that I was cleaning up over several months because the people before me were such lazy fricks. It took about 3 months for it to have an impact. When it did, it took out a major investment bank overnight. I fixed it half an hour before trading opened and they would start losing bajillions. To be fair, it wasn't entirely my fault. I'd inherited awful horrible management tools that hadn't been updated in years. Huge amounts of undocumented craft and kludges, and obsolete hardware. I was the only guy out of a team of four who bothered to pick up his phone when everything broke that night. The on-call guy, his deputy, and the manager were all missing, and came in at 2300, drunk off my butt, to a room full of nail, chewing managers wanting me to do something do anything fix IT now. I could barely see the monitor, let alone type. A colleague came in, looked around, ran out returned with a cup full of cigarettes and an ashtray, and some black coffee, muttered something like I think you're going to need this, and fled. It was almost as bad as the time I put in an 84 hour straight day, but that's another story. Or the episode with the baseball bat, or the garden hose and the overheating server room exhaust, or the contractors racing trolleys full of new top end laptops downloading ramps straight into the sprinkler system, or the top traders with bucket loads of child pee. I made a lot of money at that job. I would never do it again. Never ever ever never ever never 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 ever. Uh, this is like something straight out of the net slaves book. I was officiating a soccer game of 15 year old boys. The team's respective colors were red and white. There was one African American boy on the red team. As the game progressed, it got more dangerous and out of hand. At half time, I informed both benches that I would be calling the game tight, and that the next flagrant foul would not go unpunished. 30 seconds into the second half, the African American boy had a hard foul. I blew my whistle very aggressively and yelled, take a rest black after realizing what I had said, I immediately tried to correct myself. I stumbled over every word. The damage was already done. One player on the other team said to me, not cool dude. Military guy here, fired artillery rounds 14 kilometers off target in Afghanistan. No one was injured and the issue was more systemic than my fault so no one got in trouble after it was all said and done. The rounds were elimination so the chance for injury was pretty minimal. The scary part is that no one except me noticed the mistake. A. Close enough for government work. Not my mistake but someone I knew, I work with aircraft mechanics and a jet we worked on was launched out by a crew chief, they are pretty much in charge of all the maintenance that goes on. Well he neglected to do his walk around, as did the crew too apparently, and didn't close a sliding access door on the underbelly of the aircraft. Jet took off and wouldn't you know, it wouldn't pressurize. Funny thing is, there's a light that tells you this door is open on the flight engineer's annunciation panel. A dummy panel that tells the crew something is wrong by illuminating a light that's normally off. But no one caught it. This was the last straw for this guy as he's no longer on the line taking care of jets. It should be noted this guy wasn't a newbie either. I always wanted to have Cabraget. During the crazy days during the early internet crash I worked at a high end consulting firm doing high priced website building and analysis, million dollar contracts with blue chip firms, etc. My job was to write software to analyze website log files. Anyway, one of the clients we had built a website for was seeing super high, 75 plus percent, revisit rates, people who come to the website twice, and we had been reporting this to them for some 6 months or so. Suddenly, one day the revisit rate dropped to some small amount and we can't figure out why. We find a correction in the timing for one of the log files and proceed for another 6 months or so. I don't remember the exact time. So then, suddenly, the revisit rate drops again. My boss has an analyst investigate. To my shame, I dismiss the whole thing as a waste of time. I mean, we can just correct the timing on a log file and be good, right? 
turns out the problem was that my analysis software did not handle daylight saving time correctly. This wouldn't be a problem except that there were 3 source servers and 2 used daylight savings and 1 didn't so twice a year. The files were getting out of sync. The big problem was that we were correcting it in the wrong direction. The revisit rate that our entire senior staff had been so proud of as the highest in the industry was BS and we had been reporting it for around a year to the client who was paying us big money to do so. So we started to think of a communication strategy. The next day, our company puts out its quarterly report and superimposed on a page. The full height of the page is the incorrect revisit rate. I go to my cube and start packing my crap up. These are the kind of things lawsuits happen over and I figure it was only a matter of time before someone is going to be fired over this. But then the next day, the client company goes out of business. Woohoo. Problem solved. It was an extremely hot day and I was playing for a festival crowd of thousands. These festival tents warm up quite fast and I dehydrated like crazy under these hot lamps. It wasn't the ordinary festival. When suddenly I decided to grab a microphone and tell the crowd I was thirsty. I've never seen this much liquid. Mostly beer flying through the air towards me. When I finished the set and one of the stagehands lifted up one of the CDJs there was about 3 liters of beer running out of it. Women that have worked at Hooters or a similar themed restaurant. What is your worst story? Serious. When was in college I used to work at a local yogurt shop that required that all the girl employees wear white shorts. Usually I would get weird comments, but nothing too harmful. However, one night when I was closing by myself I saw the guy just standing at the front door. I signaled the guy that the store was closed but he just stood there and kept staring at me. I thought he did not understand me so I walked up closer to the door and that's when I saw him wanking off. It was awful and I had to call the police and it was a huge deal. What the frick is wrong with people? I once was walking down Sunset Boulevard when a few guys ran past me like they were being chased. They were a girl in Hooters attire was casually jogging behind them, easily keeping pace, and calmly shouting boo boys, don't run off, I need you to come back and pay your tab I don't know how it turned out but she looked ready to keep that pace for miles, I feel like she probably caught them. I'd root for her, you go, Hooters chick, catch those thieves. I had a summer waitressing job at a sports bar restaurant, that was basically like a poor man's Hooters. The funniest part was that the name of the establishment was very similar to the name of a local strip club. Guys would come in and walk right back out, others would ask the hostess to be seated near the stage or ask when the show started, etc. The worst was when they decided to stay, and then act like they were at a strip club. It was a long summer. I have many stories from my year spent wearing those god awful orange shorts, but my favorite by far is the older gentleman who in dead seriousness grabbed my wrist and asked, how much do you sell your P4 he's a close second to the guy who left me a note along with his phone number that said I'd really like to feel you from the inside. Using 9 inch nails lyrics as pickup lines, probably not the most effective strategy. Former Hooters girl here, I would have men who think that you're flirting with them. Wives that get mad because they think that you're flirting with them. Teenagers who think it's cool to cop a feel and a manager who would put us through a really long, super invasive inspections every day. I was a waitress at a strip club for a while. Plenty of drunk people getting kicked out and some odd individuals wanting strange requests. These people are the reasons why I never became a dancer. But I wasn't their main target since I was only a waitress not a entertainer so mine is kinda lame. The creepiest comment I can remember off the top of my head was when I was talking to a customer about how I needed to go out into the parking lot to give a customer back his card that he forgot in the sleeve after paying. The customer I was telling this story to promptly said if you come after me in the parking lot you wouldn't be coming back in. I never went after a customer who forgot their card again. I worked in the bikini bars and I am Asian so I always got the ones that wanted to see if my pee was slanted. JFC. This was almost 25 years ago in New Jersey. I am 46 now and it still get asked that. I am a dude and I witnessed this at a Hooters last night. We, just me and my buddy, sit down at a high top and there is a younger guy alone at the table next to us. It wasn't very crowded. At one point I overhear the waitress saying I can't go outside. 
Apparently he was asking if she would walk him to his car and give him a kiss. She told us the whole story of this guy who is 23. He drives an hour about every 2-3 days to come to that specific hooters to see her. Has left his number multiple times and obviously hasn't gotten the picture. He leaves and we go one with our meal. About 20-30 minutes later the waitress walks by our table and says he's back. The dude walked in and used the restroom and walked back out to his car. Gets back in his car and drives slowly by looking in. At this point we thought he left and about 10 minutes later we, my friend and I, walk out and the dude is sitting out there in the car waiting for her shift to end. I went back in and told the manager to make sure the waitress wasn't followed by him. It's guys like that, that make girls look at guys as creeps. I've had guys do that to me quite a few times. Comma it's always so scary. That was great of you guys to report what was going on to the manager. I worked as a hostess at a strip club. I was fully clothed, but guys would regularly ask for lap dances, or tell me what they wanted to do to me, etc. I was just a curious person between jobs in my technical field. I didn't need to work at a strip club. It was just a little fun. I never went too far out of my comfort zone to get tips. I was just nice to people. My worst story was I was joking around with this guy. Every time I'd walk by, we'd dance together for a little and move on. Then we started having bits of conversation here and there. He was really kind and smart. And I was enjoying our talk. Every time I'd walk away, he'd give me a dollar. After a few times, I was like, you don't have to tip me for just talking to you. He went on this long rant about how I'm just pretending to be nice to get his money. He said, I'm hoping you'll host this with a heart of gold, but you're only here right now to get my tips. He asked me if I'd go home with him if he promised to buy me breakfast in the morning. I told him absolutely not. The rant continued, but I was just too hurt that he thought I was lying and had to walk away. Worst hostess ever. Worked as a bikini bar girl. Don't really have a worst experience story. Loved my job, but occasionally customers would have a few drinks and would try grab my ass vag or attempt to pull my bikini top off. Don't do it. Will result in you either being cut off from the bar or kicked out and no amount of pleading will fix it. Being cut off from the bar isn't enough. They should always kick them out. Got angry when they never did this at the bar I worked. I got a kinda laugh at this to be honest. I work in a library and just got my butt grabbed last week by a patron while I was in the stacks. That type of terrible treatment can come from anyone, anytime, anywhere. We have off duty cops as guards and they detained him banned him and press charges. I was a librarian on the children's floor. I've been propositioned, had P sent from the public computers sent to my desk printer, and had to ban several people for masturbating, hooping in the bathroom sinks, and asking the interns to model. The library is a sordid place. I was working a party of 8 that turned into 18. They were co-workers as I recall, and sort of slowly showed up in pairs after the initial 8 top. I was certainly weeded. But for a Tuesday night this was an unexpected surprise, and as servers do, I rolled with it. There was a guy that had been sort of flirty from the get go, very common. My outfit consisted of a pretty revealing jean skirt and a snug, low cut top. Just another part of the job, you know. Anyway, a particular cocktail on our menu featured several liquors and had a limit of 2 per guest. So this guy, maxes out on his 2 specialty cocktails and gets a little friendlier, with me. He starts commenting, aggressively, your eyes, your legs, your hair, etc. Come to find out, in between the drunken passes he's asking people at the table to order more of these cocktails for him, and they're doing it. About 2 hours into the ordeal he starts slapping my butt every time I walk by. I'm going out of my way to avoid him and his co-workers are cringing. Finally he stands up, wraps his arms around me and starts swaying. He's telling me he wants to take me to the Jay-Z concert the next day and lifts me up over his shoulder. I realize he's been stealing other guests beverages and decide to tell my manager. Well, said manager, did you tell him to stop? I mean, they're gonna be gone soon anyway. Just avoid him. More or less the reaction I expected, but priceless nonetheless. Loathe that establishment. I just want to finish off by saying, if you're ever with that guy do the right thing and call him out. I was pretty straightforward, but dang, 
All those people just watched in horror as I got fondled and disrespected. Servers, no matter how scandalous you may think their uniform is, are still people, still daughters, still mothers, and still handling your food. Comma and still handling your food, made the post ha ha. I didn't work at Hooters but at a sports bar where they required us to wear skin tight jerseys with the number 88 obviously circling our breasts. I once had a drunk guy tell me you're naked under those clothes all seductively. I thought it was sarcastic and harmless until he became grabby. When I told him to back off he became persistent mumbling dirty talk and pulling me to sit on his lap. When I yelled dude stop it other guys from other tables stood up and then he became furious calling me a teasing bee and said I was leading him on. Three guys escorted him out of the building and he screamed C on the way out. Yep. My fault. I shouldn't have led him on. Worked as a cocktail waitress at a strip club. Aside from guys asking me to sit in their lap. Go home with them. Grab me. I never got that much harassment. Major resting B face and I don't flirt with customers. Which was weird for my line of work. Or I'm ugly. Take your pick. But this one time. I was walking by a table with one dude sitting there, enjoying the show, when he pulls me over and says, I just want you to know, you're the prettiest girl in here, and, completely deadpan, I just reply, that's because it's a Tuesday, and go back to work. I worked as a shot girl in college at a local, pizza place. Everyone was cool to me, and most people realized this was not my first choice in jobs. However, our skirts were so short that you couldn't feel it hitting your legs it sort of just hung there. Of course, because of this, I failed to realize that my skirt was tucked into my nylons, and rolled around like that half the night showing off my booty until I overheard some guys say, should we tell her and then reached for my skirt, only to discover the nightmare. I was once called a bee by a guy because I wouldn't sit at his table and flirt with him. I told him that he would have better luck with that at a strip club so he gave me a penny and left. I worked at Coyote Ugly a few years back. Besides the occasional butt grabbing spanking, which would be followed by a BMF bouncer coming out of nowhere to drag them out of the bar, I would say our patrons were what you would get in any other bar. When I first started working there I was working the doors merchandise counter and a tanked guy offered me $40 for the shirt off my back. I sold it to him and got him to buy me a replacement shirt, ducking behind the counter to put on my new clean shirt. He sniffed it and told me he was going to hang it in his rear view mirror so he could smell me while he drove. I mean, if sweaty smelly shirts are your thing cool. Other than the occasional odd occurrences I had a great time working there. I went to a coyote ugly in San Antonio during my buddy's bachelor party. One of the bartenders fell in love with the groom's brother. She challenged him to a chug contest and when he lost she poured a bucket of water on him. Then got him to take his wet shirt off. If her flirting was bad when he had his shirt on, it was downright obscene when he took it off. LOL. I have been working at a restaurant called Tilted Killed for about 3 weeks. Wasn't my section. But I walked over to drop off some refills with a big bright smile and hey guys. Cold drinks. A senior citizen at the table motioned for me to lean in but still very loudly asked ever get paid to frick an old guy? I must steal a restaurant. I worked as a waitress for a summer in Times Square. Worst experience was with a 50 plus Indian tourist who came in with his family. When I was talking to him he gestured for me to lean in, as though he couldn't hear me. When I did he asked if he could feel my butt and then tried to move and kiss me, in front on his wife and daughter, neither of whom batted an eyelid, so I presume this was a common occurrence. I refused to serve his table, and before he left he apparently told my manager that I had been rude to him. Worst part is his daughter apparently backed him up. I worked as a shot girl, wearing chaps and a bra to work. I quit my job while dressed as a bunny rabbit wearing chaps on Easter Eve. My girlfriend is a bartender at one. Some dude started humping the bar and tried to hit on her. Another dude pulled out some money and told her I'd love to see you work a pole. We've a joke when I go there where I say some cheesy and cringe worthy stuff then she gives me her number. I'm the baddest dude in the joint for at least an hour. I don't have any, 
Seriously the easiest job I could have had during grad school. Made the most money for my time and the managers allowed girls in school to pick their hours. They also didn't stand for customer bulls and encouraged the reporting of any harassment with a no questions asked eviction policy for the offender. One of my managers was an ex-marine and he didn't mess around with that kind of crap. Everyone respected him and he was nice. Another manager was a hooters girl once too and moved up to grams. So we had it pretty easy. Also it was in Florida so the outfits weren't considered as scandalous as in the rest of the nation since we were always in shorts and tanks anyways. I worked there for 3 years. Indeed only in Florida, Hooters is more a family chain than anything. I was a Hooters girl for a summer, and there were pros and cons just like any other job. My worst story, I was serving a man who was there by himself, very common, and had been at one of my tables for about 4 hours. Also pretty common. He asked if he could give me shoulder massage. Another Hooters girl had already let him give her one. And since I was his actual server, I figured hey, I should probably let him too because let's be honest, you work for your tips. So I'm standing in front of this man with my back to him, and he's massaging my shoulders. It actually feels pretty good. When wait a minute, dude starts kissing my neck from behind. Like what the frick. Romantically, I of course stepped away and he left soon after, with a $75 tip or something like that behind, but I still obviously felt violated. This is just one example of when a customer got too touchy, and it was always very frustrating when people somehow felt like they had the right to do things like that. The daily uniform inspections were just as invasive particular as some of the other girls have described. Makeup has to be done. Hair completely down and heat styled with no pins or clips. Nails have to be natural or french tipped. Only jewelry allowed was stud earrings or wedding rings. Managers would make us change to smaller sizes if they felt our tops weren't tight enough. We got examined every shift. There were also the guys who would somehow find me on Facebook. Even though I lived in a different city than the one I worked in, and my profile had no mentions of Hooters. They only knew my first name, which is a fairly common one. So they must have done some hard searching, which is uncomfortable. Mostly, though, it was a fun job. I became friends with the girls I worked with and the tips were awesome. I wouldn't go back, but my time there was filled with more positive experiences and bad ones. Not really a horrible story, but I used to work at an Ohio chain called Star Diner. And the girl's manager was a 42 year old chain smoking saggy skinned lady who liked to pick on the younger girls if they didn't have time to put on makeup or if they happened to gain a couple pounds. She pulled me aside a few times to tell me how I should style my hair or do my eye makeup. One time I gained a couple of pounds. The food was amazing. And she made me cry almost every day until I lost the weight. I've always gotten compliments on my looks and never had anyone say anything negative about my body so she really made my self esteem plummet. I was a really good worker who took pride in my job and never complained about anything and she ended up firing me after about a year because of cutbacks when there were other girls on the floor who would cry if they didn't average $30 an hour for the day. The money was nice, though. My time to shine. Alright. So I was new to the restaurant chain, about 1 month in and only 18 at the time. We were made to take a shift on either Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or nigh and silly me forgot to sign up so I was stuck closing the restaurant on New Year's Eve. I work in a larger suburban area in southern Illinois, so store was empty for the most part near midnight. 11.15 a well tipping regular comes in and there's only me and one other girl working, so I snatch him up hoping to make an easy buck. 11.30 his two buddies saunter in, one an average Joe that just came off of his construction job and the other a hulking, what appeared to me, being fairly small framed, 7 feet mass of testosterone hack bent on getting fricked up, 11.31 shots 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 everybody, while these fellows are demolishing their livers, a gent who was in the restaurant earlier, that I had been talking to for a couple hours, decides to come back in and sit at the bar so we can chat again, Side note, I'm never actually interested in anybody I meet at work as what they see is a contrad to heck face that looks next to nothing like me and I'd prefer to meet somebody that isn't just hitting on me because of my bright orange shorts. But he was good at making conversation so it was a nice change from the typical forced convo. Unfortunately, this guy assumed I was very interested, not just looking for tips. 
11.58 the regular and his friends are wasted and I'm commuting back and forth between the man at the bar and the band of brutes bringing drinks and making conversation. 11.59 the NYC New Year balls about to drop and both parties are beckoning me over and I'm standing in the middle of the two probably 7 feet from each. The massive friend of the regular and the nice fellow at the bar both saying earlier they wanted a New Year's kiss. Crap. 5 oh god this is a nightmare. 4 Jesus take the wheel. 3 fuck 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 it a fuck. 2 some miracle must occur right this moment oh god why. 1 at this moment I awkwardly threw my hands up. Still standing in between the two parties. Yelling. Happy new year. Then I swiftly booked it around the corner into the back as fast as my bulky white shoes would allow. Bonus discomfort. As the regular and his pals were leaving the big guy decides to grab Emmy and pick Emmy up. Hug me. Spin me around. And set me back down. I got a huge tip though. All that actually sounds pretty bad lol. Love the way you told the story though. I've got a few stories. I worked at Hooters for a little bit. On one of my rare day shifts there was a man that came in, looked a little messy, and asked to be seated with the hottest girl. It was just me and the hostess up there. So I told him to look around and pick one. He chose me. I tried to get out of it but he insisted. I sat him down and while taking his drink order he pulled out a gallon sized ziplock bag of prescriptions and started taking a few out. I walked away from him to get his drink and came back and set it down. He told me to sit down with him. Then continued to talk about how great I looked walking away from him. Then continued about how my butt was perfect and what he'd do to it and how he'd like to see it naked and so on. I got up and went to my GM and told him about what happened. He told him to leave. The guy left me a dollar. Not so bad. There was a regular that came in during the daytime hours, which I rarely worked as I said. He was freaking loaded. Like rich as frick. I didn't say one word to him and knew nothing about him, and randomly somehow it came up that he'd buy me anything. I laughed and was like yeah right. And without hesitation or breaking eye contact he said I'm serious, what do you want? This guy would literally buy you a car, pay your rent, whatever you wanted. But of course that wasn't free. I never considered anything. But apparently some of the girls I worked with were friendly with him. If you sat with him for one hour without leaving, and talk to him, he'd give you $100. Kind of sad if you ask me, but the other girl didn't care. This happened to my best friend while working there. One of the regulars stopped her and talked to her about how nice her lips are, how soft they look, and how he wanted to touch them. He asked if her lips were like her pee lips and how he wanted to touch them, and so on. She was so uncomfortable with him, yet he came in almost every day. She even refused to serve their table and told the GM. He did nothing and told her she had to. That's all I can remember right now. For the most part it was a fun job. I loved the girls I worked with. And the money was great most nights. My girlfriend worked at Sholmes which is just the Missouri knockoff of Hooters. But she had a few bad experiences. The worst by far was the guy who would show up only for her and wait for her to leave. It got to the point where he followed her to her car and pinned her to it. Considering she is only 5 feet 2 and this guy was 6 feet 4 range and had about 200 plus pounds on her, she would have had no chance against him. She was lucky and some regulars saw this and yelled at him to leave. The managers refused to walk to her to her car after repeated complaints to them. She quit right after thank god. Plus the food sucked anyway. I worked in a nightclub for a couple of months as a server, not a hooters but it attracted the young. Crappy Jajabum frat boy affliction t-shirt crowd. I was walking through the crowd with a tray of drinks and a wasted guy came up and grabbed my chest and my crotch. I dropped everything and tried to push him off but he kept molesting me. Finally I got away and grabbed a bouncer. He was arrested and barred from the club. Another time a guy got down on one knee as if to propose to me, but then flipped my skirt up. We recently banned an old creepy man from my hooters. He would come in, pay girls for their phone numbers, then send them nasty pictures in hopes of reciprocation. I ended up having to serve him once and I told him I didn't have a phone and he said, baby I'll buy you a phone. I bluntly denied his offer and he comes back with, well maybe I could buy you something from Victoria's Secret and proceeded to guess my bra size with terrifying accuracy. I stopped service and then during my next shift he showed up with a Versus and a T-Mobile bag. Thus he was banned from Hooters. 
One time I was working and this guy came in, who was clearly some kind of celebrity. He had like this whole entourage with him. Looked like he was some rapper or something. With all the chains they all had on. Anyway. He seemed to take a weirdly intense liking to me. And started hitting on me excessively. It was super uncomfortable. He kept saying Courtney. You're the piece to complete me. Whenever I asked his friends for their order. He would get all pissy and passive aggressive. Like he was jealous or something. I swear to god I saw his eyes well up when I asked his friend if he wanted a refill before I asked him. When I went to collect the check, he had folded it up into an intricate origami swan. When I unfolded it, I saw that he had written call me with a big heart around it, and left no tip, or phone number. Not nearly as bad as some of the other stories on here, but still, super weird. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.